Hardly anyone can think of classic Hollywood without recalling actress Grace Kelly. She wasn't in very many films, but Kelly had a huge impact on Hollywood and on the world. Here's the tragic story of Grace Kelly. Grace Patricia Kelly was the third child born into a wealthy Irish Catholic family in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Kellys were never fully accepted into high society despite their substantial wealth. If someone had the good luck of being wealthy around the early to middle part of the 20th century, they still had to have the right background to be welcomed among the upper class. Unfortunately, it didn't matter how much money a family had if they were of the Irish Catholic persuasion, as many elites still gave them the cold shoulder. According to the Washington Post, Grace's father Jack Kelly was not one to be put out. If he wasn't going to be accepted among the Philadelphia mainline elites, he would have just as luxurious a mansion as any aristocrat. So he built an elegant family home in the East Falls neighborhood of Philadelphia. Jack was the son of Irish immigrants and made his fortune in the construction trade during the post-World War I boom. He was also one of the rare few unaffected by the 1929 market crash due to him never investing in stocks. Grace Kelly came from a wildly athletic and sociable family. Her father, Jack, was a three-time Olympic gold medalist in rowing. Her mother, Margaret, was a model and a competitive swimmer. Kelly's father expected all of his children to be just as extroverted. But according to Vanity Fair, Kelly was shy and introverted. She suffered from asthma and sinus problems as a child, much to her father's disappointment. Grace's serenity made her stand out from her siblings, but that wasn't enough to interest or impress her father. Her siblings weren't sympathetic to her relationship with her father. According to one story, her sister Liz Ann one time locked her in a cupboard. Rather than try to escape, Kelly simply stayed in the closet and quietly played with her dolls until someone discovered her hours later. Grace Kelly's family was disapproving when she announced her intention to become an actress. According to biography, her father most notably was displeased with his daughter's career choice and said that an actress was a slim cut above a streetwalker. But as biography notes, her uncle Walter Kelly was a successful vaudeville performer, while her other uncle George Kelly was a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. George was one of the actress's greatest influences and became her primary mentor and confidant. It was thanks to her uncle's guidance that Grace Kelly learned the ins and outs of Hollywood and was able to gain admittance to the American Academy of the Dramatic Arts in Manhattan. Grace Kelly tried not to rely too much on family relations or money to advance her career. Her parents didn't want her to move to New York, but Kelly was insistent. According to Vanity Fair, she even covered her own tuition by taking lucrative jobs as a commercial model. Kelly also had to lose her Philadelphian accent and get control of her sinus troubles, which she tried by taking diction lessons and wearing a clothespin on her nose. Her newly refined accent was the subject of some mockery from her family. What's the matter with me, Mark? I don't seem able to feel anything. After a few roles on Broadway, Kelly decided to try Hollywood. Vanity Fair stated that she took great care with her appearance when attending auditions, dressing conservatively and ladylike, and even wearing white gloves, highly unusual in the Hollywood world. But it worked. Her biggest break arrived when Gary Cooper discovered her during her first film, 14 Hours. Cooper then had her cast as his wife in his latest film, High Noon. Cooper's endorsement put Grace Kelly on the road to stardom. She went on to another major motion picture, Mogambo, alongside Clark Gable, and later won the Academy Award for Best Actress for The Country Girl. Kelly also became a favorite of director Alfred Hitchcock, who notoriously had a weakness for elegant blondes. Grace Kelly seemed to have a particular type when it came to her romantic choices. She was constantly cast as the romantic interest of men who were usually more than 20 years her senior, which played a role in her real-life relationships. According to Vanity Fair, Kelly had a two-year romance with one of her instructors, Don Richardson, who was 11 years Grace's senior. He was also Jewish, something that wildly aggravated Kelly's notoriously anti-Semitic father family pressure put an end to the relationship. Kelly was said to have had many affairs with her older male, sometimes married, co-stars. She had been linked to romances with major actors such as Clark Gable, Bing Crosby, Ray Milland, and Frank Sinatra. At one point, she dated Prince Ali Khan and almost married fashion designer Oleg Cassini. Kelly's love letters to Cassini were discovered and printed by Harper's Bazaar many years after her death. The details of her romantic dalliances are still a point of interest. Grace Kelly met her future husband, Prince Rainier III of Monaco, at the Cannes Film Festival while promoting To Catch a Thief. Country Living stated that it was through actress Olivia de Havilland that Kelly was formally introduced to him. At the time, de Havilland was married to Pierre Galante, the editor of Paris Match magazine. After meeting Kelly on the train from Paris to Cannes, de Havilland asked Kelly if she would be interested in a personal meeting with Prince Rainier. De Havilland said many years later in an interview with People, Grace struck me on first encounter as a rather reserved, self-possessed, well-brought-up young woman. 
After getting approval from MGM, Grace agreed to meet the prince. This initial first meeting would spark a correspondence between the two, which later resulted in their engagement. Kelly fell in love with the prince while she was filming The Swan, where she played a young princess preparing to become the wife of a European king. MGM also filmed the couple's royal wedding in 1956 and broadcast it across Europe. Grace Kelly found a love match with Prince Rainier III, but some have wondered whether there was a mercenary aspect to the marriage. According to The Telegraph, Prince Rainier came to the Monaco throne in 1949 after the devastation of World War II. He not only inherited a principality, but he also had to deal with the country's financial issues. Rainier decided to make Monaco a tax haven and made it look more appealing to foreign millionaires, tourists, and businesses. But the unmarried Rainier needed his future wife to bring a tidy sum into their marriage, and a beautiful Hollywood actress could bring the money and the publicity to Monaco. Kelly wasn't even the first actress on Rainier's shortlist. According to the Chicago Tribune, at one point, Rainier had an interest in Hollywood cover girl Marilyn Monroe. A letter was sent to her from Rainier, but Monroe ultimately turned him down, not fancying herself the princess type. Also, Monroe was beginning her romance with playwright Arthur Miller and was eager for more serious film work. But Rainier eventually met Kelly, who had the looks, the prestige, and the cash. As it would turn out, becoming a princess wasn't as charming as it's hyped up to be. For Grace Kelly, the actual path to princesshood was far from a fairy tale, according to the Chicago Tribune. Why don't you want a place like this? Palaces are for royalty. We're just common people with a bank account. In order to marry and become a royal of Monaco, Kelly would unfortunately have to give up her acting career and renounce her U.S. citizenship a hefty price to pay to marry into international royalty. Since money was a concern for Monaco, Prince Rainier insisted on receiving a dowry for Kelly to have the privilege of marrying a prince. The asking price was $2 million. Despite having the money, Kelly's father wasn't thrilled about paying for his beautiful, famous daughter to get married. But the prospect of a royal in the family and all the benefits were too good to pass up. Father and daughter agreed to each pay half on the dowry. Kelly also had to submit to a fertility test to prove that she could produce heirs. Nothing says fairy tale like an invasive and uncomfortable medical procedure. That's exactly what was running through my mind. The reasoning behind the test was that Monaco still had an old agreement with France from 1918, which dictated that if Monaco had no heir, the principality would be returned to French rule. So, as invasive as a fertility test was for Kelly, for the royal family, it was a necessity. Kelly agreed to the medical exam, and once she was in the clear, the wedding could proceed. Prince Rainier may have had a vested interest in marrying a beautiful starlet, but that didn't mean he had any admiration for the acting profession. Grace Kelly's Hollywood fame brought significant and valuable publicity to Monaco, but Rainier disapproved of Kelly's former career. He viewed it as an undignified profession, particularly for a royal princess. He seemed to share similar sentiments as Kelly's father, regarding acting as too common and naive of a practice. According to The Guardian, out of concern that Kelly's movies would negatively impact the image of the royal family, Rainier banned all of his wife's films in Monaco for years. Although Kelly agreed to give up her career in order to become a princess, she still missed acting and wished she could return to her profession. In 1962, she tentatively tried to stage a comeback. She was about to sign on to play the titular role of Alfred Hitchcock's upcoming film Marnie, but the public outcry in Monaco was overwhelming. And it wasn't just that she would be acting again, but the fact that her lead character in the Hitchcock film was a criminal. The people of Monaco shuddered at the thought of their refined, elegant princess playing the role of a common crook. According to Vogue, Grace mourned the loss of her on-screen career for the rest of her life, even telling the Los Angeles Times in 1964, I miss acting. Once you're bitten with the acting bug, you never really get over it. Grace Kelly had three children with Rainier, Princess Caroline, Prince Albert, and Princess Stephanie. Yet Kelly seemed to struggle to connect with her children, possibly as a result of her royal duties and responsibilities. In recent years, after both their parents had passed away, Princess Caroline and Prince Albert revealed in interviews, as reported by Insider, that they weren't particularly close to their mother. Caroline and Albert were only a year apart and grew up with a close bond and shared a nanny, Maureen Wood, with whom they felt more of a parental connection than with either of their parents. They preferred their nanny so much that they would cry when Wood was away on her annual vacation, and Kelly would ask Wood if she could come back to work early on occasion. Caroline and Albert added that they were not even allowed to eat dinner with their parents until they were 14 years old. Even Grace, by her own admission to ABC News, said that she was a hard disciplinarian to her three children. She wasn't above lashing out or speaking harshly. Kelly stated, We sort of tend to think that knowledge is a substitute for discipline, and it never will be. Uh, our children were brought up with a certain amount of discipline. And unfortunately wasn't much different than Kelly's own authoritarian mother who raised her in this way. 
The news of Princess Grace of Monaco's death took the world by shock. According to the Independent Ireland, Kelly had been in fine health at 52 years old as far as anyone knew. Kelly was driving her 17-year-old daughter Stephanie to school in Paris one day when tragedy struck. The details of what precisely happened are hazy, but it appears that Kelly took a sharp turn on a steep mountain turn that caused the car to shoot down a 120-foot slope. Stephanie only sustained minor injuries, but Grace suffered a brain hemorrhage. She died on September 14, 1982 at Monaco Hospital. It was later renamed Princess Grace Hospital Center in honor of Kelly. Kelly's eldest daughter, Princess Caroline, assumed Grace's role in the royal family. After her death, Prince Rainier established the Princess Grace Foundation in the U.S., an organization dedicated to financially supporting emerging artists in theater, dance, and film. Prince Rainier never remarried. He was buried beside Grace after his death in 2005. At her funeral service, co-star and lifelong friend James Stewart said of Kelly, Grace brought into my life as she brought into yours a soft, warm light every time I saw her, and every time I saw her was a holiday of its own.